G'day everyone, welcome back. I jumped into Guild Wars 2 about three months ago, and coming from a decade as a hardcore World of Warcraft player, I was blown away. While I've tried other MMOs like Final Fantasy XIV, Destiny 2, Elder Scrolls Online, and more, none of them ever grabbed me like WoW had. Until Guild Wars 2. So much so that I started making videos about it. So let's get started. I'm starting off our top 10 with perhaps the most defining and unique feature of Guild Wars 2, its horizontal endgame progression design. This is actually one of the most significant features. Simply put, instead of constantly raising the level cap and relative character power, making previous content obsolete like most MMOs do, Guild Wars 2 has had the same level cap since the game launched a decade ago. The same pieces of equipment that were best in slot over 10 years ago are still the best in slot equipment today. Now wait. I know how that sounds to a player who lives for that next piece of gear, that next upgrade, that next power increase. I really do because I was that player. I thought the same thing you probably are right now when I first heard about this horizontal progression thing. But I was wrong. Trust me when I say the brilliance of this design can't be overstated. For the same reason that the best in slot gear is the same as it was 10 years ago, every piece of content Arena have ever made is still as relevant as the day it was released. Every zone, every world boss, every raid or event that's ever been released still rewards relevant currency, relevant rewards, and never becomes outdated. And the game still provides many other ways to grow your character and still feel like you're progressing through unlocking masteries, investing time and effort into legendary gear sets, collecting cosmetics and mounts and achievements and more, but never in a way that feels redundant or like it won't matter in six months time because it still will matter, and that's the great thing about this design. Once you hit level 80, you continue to earn experience for everything you do which progresses the post-level cap mastery system. As you explore, you collect these mastery points, and as you fill the mastery XP bar, you unlock skills, abilities, and passives that are tied to specific regions. Some of the most significant examples include unlocking the gliding ability from Heart of Thorns, which is super useful, or the variety of mounts that Path of Fire has to offer. And there are multiple tiers within each feature that improve the gameplay enhancements even further. This means you're never just chasing a higher level, but rather tangible skills that directly enhance your journey. With the mastery system, I always feel like anything I'm doing is contributing to my character in some way. Now you all know what mounts are, so I'll keep this short. Guild Wars 2's mounts are just fun to use, plain and simple. Something about them is just so much more engaging than just moving slightly faster. They actually accelerate and decelerate, and they all have a few different abilities, such as a unique engage skill to get you into combat in style. I think the best part is that they all contribute in their own unique way to enhancing your exploration in the game. The raptor leaps gaps, the springer jumps super high vertically and will enable you to reach places you otherwise can't. The skimmer hovers over water and the roller beetle is the fastest land mount but gains momentum and is genuinely difficult to control. Not to mention the griffin and sky scale, which gave us WoW's dragon flying five years before WoW did. You can even upgrade them with masteries to jump higher, leap further, break through walls and more. And yet somehow, my hands down favourite part about the mounts is that you mount instantly. This shouldn't be a big deal. Why am I still casting to mount up in 2023 and all these other games? Just let me mount on the run. Well, Guild Wars 2 does, and I love it. Guild Wars 2 takes the term shared experience very seriously. Whether you're talking about mounts, mastery points, collections, currencies, crafting materials, or certain equipment, the majority of what you achieve or acquire in this game is accessible across your entire account. This has got to be one of the most alt-friendly games I've ever played. The game's philosophy is crystal clear. Guild Wars 2 respects your time and effort. It's not just a game feature, it's a testament to a design philosophy that values player commitment. Boons in Guild Wars 2 aren't your everyday buffs you'd find in other games. They're power-ups that substantially influence gameplay. Take for instance Fury that boosts your crit chance by 25%, Quickness making you 50% faster in every action, or Alacrity that speeds up ability cooldowns by 25%. There are 12 unique boons that are common across all professions and specs, and I think these add far more depth to build crafting or group composition than typical raid buffs like what you have in WoW. For solo players, the absence of a group to generate boons for you turns solo build crafting into a fine balance and with a few more layers to it. You don't just take all the weapons and skills that hit the hardest because the value of generating some boons for yourself like Quickness, Might or Fury is just far greater. In group content like Fractals, Raids or Strikes, boons dictate the need for an organized group composition to min-max group output. Generally in every group, you'll want a spread of boons being generated and sustained on the group. And some players in the group 
will be allocated this responsibility and they'll need to modify their build accordingly. For the players responsible for generating these boons, it actually requires them to execute their abilities and rotations effectively, offering a sense of value outside just DPS. And I think it's a far more engaging way of creating composition considerations compared to something like WoW's raid buffs. Collections are a part of the achievement system and are basically these in-game shopping lists of tasks, achievements, milestones and objectives that reward players in meaningful ways. Everything from equipment to currencies, cosmetics and even the most sought after mounts in the game like the Griffin and Skyscale come from collections. Some collections you can knock out in half an hour and some will take weeks to chip away at. I've found them a surprisingly simple way of giving the typical MMO achievement system some gameplay relevance. And I've personally spent hours on end completely engaged just chipping away at a certain collection for a piece of equipment with specific stats or cool new mounts like the roller beetle. I won't dive into the details of the crafting and gathering systems because it takes entire videos to break down how these work. And to be honest, it's not dissimilar to the deep and intricate crafting systems in most MMOs. What I love about the Guild Wars 2 crafting system though is very simple. It is relevant. You can make all of the most powerful gear in the game completely through crafting alone if you so wished. Yes, it would take you lots of time and effort. And that's okay, because your time and effort is rewarded with the strongest gear that you won't replace. I've loved the experience of playing through the Guild Wars 2 story from the beginning in order through the core game, the living world seasons, and each expansion. Admittedly, the story did begin at a slow pace in the core game with some weak moments, but boy, it did pick up steam in the living world seasons and expansions. You develop a team of just a handful of characters that I've actually grown to know and care about. Some of them I love, some of them I find really annoying, but the point is the game has got some level of emotional buy-in from me, which I think makes all the difference in how engaged I am with the story throughout. Like any piece of entertainment, the quality has got its ups and downs, but I've never really been the kind of person that deep dives the writing and critiques every little detail. For me, if I'm engaged enough that I know what's going on in the story, and I care about the dialogue enough that I'm not listening to YouTube on the other screen, then it's doing its job. And it's done exactly that the entire way through, which I've loved. Commander. No! 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 In Guild Wars 2, every weapon type comes with a unique set of five core abilities. And get this, they differ for every profession. For instance, the Warrior's Greatsword abilities are completely different to the Ranger's Greatsword abilities. The vast spectrum of core weapon abilities available to every profession allows the player to dive deep into their own flavor, fantasy, and style. If I want to be a Ranger wielding a massive two-handed greatsword in melee, I can. If I want to be a Ranger that unleashes on enemies from a distance with a longbow, I can do that too. If I want to wield double throwing axes that ricochet between enemies, I can. And gosh, it's fun. The weapons are all so unique and engaging, and I just love the variation and class fantasy options available, all within the one profession. But it doesn't stop there. Combine the various weapons available to every profession with five different specialization trees, three elite specializations, and the plethora of equipment types, stats, runes, and sigils, and you've really got a build crafting paradise. This has genuinely been one of my favorite things about this game, and I've spent so many hours playing around with the different options, shuffling weapons and traits, testing different armor stats or specializations. It really feels like there are so many viable options for every type of content. Before we jump into my number one feature, I want to give an honorable mention to Guild Wars 2's instance PvE content, including raids, strikes, fractals, or world vs. world. I've dipped my toes into these, and they're a lot of fun so far, to be honest. But if you're wondering why this isn't in the top 10 list, it's not because they aren't good, I just don't think they are what makes Guild Wars 2 unique among other MMOs. But don't worry, they do deserve their spotlight, and they'll get it. I'm preparing a dedicated video giving my first impressions on Guild Wars 2's raids, strikes, and fractals, so be sure to hit that comment section and subscribe if you want to see that. Guild Wars 2's open world experience is incredible. It is by far the standout feature and the main thing, I think, that makes this game so unique. It's unlike anything I've experienced in any other MMO. First off, Forget about traditional quests. Guild Wars 2 does have their version of quests called Renown Hearts, but honestly, they're not that important. The real magic lies in the dynamic events that constantly pop up all over the open world. Every zone is full of events, massive world bosses, challenging bounties, adventures, and these awesome things called meta events. These are no ordinary standalone events. They're intricate chains of events that narrate the story of that zone often ending in a world boss or some epic event that requires lots of players to complete. Some metas even require players across the zone to progress three lanes of events, usually led by a commander in each lane. The commander system in itself is fantastic. 
It's an experienced player who's unlocked the ability to designate themselves as a commander, and then they pop up on your map, and anyone can just join their group and be led through the meta event, which brings accessibility to new players who have no idea what's going on. What's truly remarkable again is due to the game's horizontal progression, even expansion zones from a decade ago remain vibrant and relevant and bustling with players today. There's been countless times since I started playing where I'm just bumbling along by myself doing some story missions or maybe chasing a collection and then out of nowhere entire hordes of players doing something completely different. Maybe chasing a hero point train or progressing a zone meta. They just swarm past me. These are the awesome moments that really feel like what an MMO should be. Well, the world is alive and full of players. To sum up, I've been in Guild Wars 2 for months now, and I've barely stepped foot in instanced group PvE content, and I haven't been bored for a second. Yes, part of that is that I've got a decade of content to catch up on, but again, that's the brilliance of the horizontal progression. I actually do have a decade of relevant content to play through and enjoy, unlike other MMOs, where every expansion renders the previous content completely obsolete. I can't overstate how good the open world content in Guild Wars 2 is. Just trust me and try it for yourself. So that's my top 10 features as a new player. I've loved the journey through Guild Wars 2 so far and I'm so excited to keep playing more. If you liked the video and didn't before, please like and subscribe. It helps out so much. Thanks for listening everyone. Cheers.